What if I told you I have an entirely new variety of obsidian to show you? Oh it's my god! How cool are these? The different colors, the different patterns, the different intensities. I cannot get over this. Okay, Rob, this is a little bit different. It is a little bit different. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> I felt like it'd been a little while since we got some of these specimens out, so I thought it'd be cool to do a quick overview of what obsidian is, some of the different types of obsidian, and then afterwards, I've got a surprise. I like surprises. So what is obsidian? Okay, so obsidian is a type of natural glass. It comes from lava. So lava rapidly cools. And when that happens, obsidian doesn't have time to properly crystallize like other gems do that have really long like incubation periods. It's amorphous. It doesn't have a regularly repeating crystal structure. And so it's a type of natural glass. It has this vitreous luster. It breaks like glass. It's sharp like glass and that's why it's been used for cutting edges. Yeah, exactly. I noticed it was really pointy and you were sitting next to it. It's been used no, it's, in weaponry. Well, yeah, and even medical tools as far back as the Stone Age. Obsidian actually provides a very clean cut microscopically. Medically, it's actually really beneficial. I brought this guy out because the uh, reflectiveness of it made it a pretty good mirror as well. Ah. You can see yourself in that. Oh, I don't like yourself. that. We'll sell okay. <laughs> Glass is uh, SiO2 or silicon dioxide, but obsidian can also have oxides of elements like calcium, potassium, and sodium. You tend to find obsidian near volcanoes that were recently active. I mean, recently as in like the last million years or so, which doesn't sound very recent, but in the grand scheme of Earth's existence, it's like last week. It's not incredibly durable. There's a lot of weathering and erosion to survive that for millions of years. It takes quite the skill. So do you want to go over some of the different varieties that I've got here on the table? Yes. When people think of obsidian, they think, oh yeah, it's a black mm -hmm. natural glass. But there are actually a lot of different types of varieties. Yeah. So let's start with this guy. Mm -hmm. Snowflake obsidian. Snowflake obsidian. So what happens here is over time, there are parts of the obsidian that actually crystallized. It doesn't happen in a uniform manner. And so you have these white spots on the obsidian. Yeah, these new little radiant clusters are actually not obsidian anymore. They're a new material called cristobalite. I like this one a lot. I do too. This is mahogany yeah. uh, obsidian. I like this one because it is the most aptly named thing on this whole table. The reddish kind of brown streaks come from iron impurities, which yeah. makes it look like wood. It even resembles like the knots in the wood. Yeah. I love that. These are called Apache tears. These guys are cool. So the idea is that these are little super cooled droplets of like lava rain that splattered down into a lake and cooled super rapidly. I wouldn't want to be a fish in that lake. No, sure wouldn't. The matrix on this one is called perlite. Okay, let's go to the velvet obsidian. We've got some checker pieces here. So at the right angle, these kind of can show you the colors of a peacock's tail. These guys come from Mexico specifically. And they really do kind of look like crushed velvet. What is crushed velvet? Like, it's a material. You're a boy, you don't understand. <laughs> Let's go to these banded ones. Oh, yeah. that looks like the that Northern Lights. Yeah, that one's got a lot of pop to it. Oh my goodness. We have some iridescent obsidian, which is really cool. These optical effects can occur because of inclusions in the stone. Some mm -hmm. have tiny gas bubbles that cause interference and reflection. Some have minute magnetite needles. This is called rainbow obsidian. Oh wow, there it was. Yeah, there it is. There's like magenta and green and blue. Ah, no, okay. What about this guy? The gold. Oh, there he goes. Oh, right yeah. Okay, so gold sheen. This is from a place in Oregon called Glass Butte. It's famous for different types of obsidian. I like this. It reminds me of Labradorite. This is cool, Rob. I'm glad you're liking it because there's a little bit more to come. Uh. What if I told you I have an entirely new variety of obsidian to show you? I would be excited. Okay, let's get these out of the way so that we can bring in the uh, first box. Love it. It's not heavy, but. It's a box of glass, so be It careful. is large. Oh my goodness. In air, water will kill me, but in a gem, it may make me come alive. What am I? Go ahead and open her up. 
Oh, cool. Oh my god. How cool are these? So our friend Kyle from World of Rock Hounds sent us over these. Thank so you, Kyle. all credit is due to Kyle. This is Fire Obsidian. Oh my goodness. Well, and I understand why it's called that right? because of the fiery colors. I cannot get over this. So some are super translucent, almost transparent in parts. Other parts are more opaque. Well, you have the one. That one has an amazing I've pattern. Got, I've got the one. I yeah. love that one. It looks like really thick brush strokes, just like you've mm -hmm. like taken a rainbow and kind of like brushed through it. That really iridescent part, mm -hmm. when you ha shine it up against the light, you can see kind of like a plate, like a, a massively large layer right there. See how that's yeah, there's a line. translucent there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so what causes that? That's actually caused by very, very, very thin layers of crystallized magnetite. I imagine that cutting these is a very delicate process. If you have these really thin layers, mm -hmm. you need to know exactly where to stop yeah. so you don't remove it. Remove yeah. that iridescent layer. So there's rainbow obsidian mm -hmm. and then there's fire obsidian. Right. Both have you know, iridescence caused by internal features. So my understanding is that rainbow obsidian is a little bit more uniform when it comes to an internal structure. With fire obsidian, you have a little bit more of a random iridescence. You have just more random patterns. So these display a good variety of different patterns. Yeah, they, they really do. This one just kind of like has a wash uh -huh. of orange and yellow with a little bit of blue in there. This one has some really cool banding. You can almost see the layers stacked upon one another. Oh, that's cool. It's like Fordite. This specimen has a little bit fainter of an effect, but still really cool and very transparent of top. Yeah. Let's talk about what causes this type of iridescence. There's a phenomenon called thin film interference. This is also what causes the labradorescence in labradorite. You have stacked layers or films where light enters and it gets reflected or refracted in succession. When it reflects off of the layers, light interferes in different ways. Some light waves cancel each other out, some intensify each other. That's where you get the, the different colors, the different patterns, the different intensities. So one of Kyle's friends, Jared, who has a channel called Currently Rock Hounding, he did some research on fire obsidian and found that the magnetite layers can be four times thinner than a human hair. That incredibly is thin. That is incredibly and that's, thin. And that's your target when you're polishing one of these. That's like your window of error. So you or margin of error. really know what you're doing. Yes. So these guys are all polished, finished product. The color has been found and exposed. But how do you find color when you can't see it in rough obsidian? Uh, does the answer have to do with water? Yes, it does. Okay. Let's take some rough obsidian, get it wet, and see if we can find the fire within. A little experiment. Yeah. So we've got a big bowl of water here <laughs> and uh, one big hunk of rough obsidian. Something that our buddy Kyle likes to do. He goes to a shop and sees what they've got and he'll bring with him some water and a flashlight and take some of these specimens, get them a little wet in some areas and shine the light and see what he can find on the inside. So we're going to immerse this? Yeah. So we're going to submerge it. Ooh. Oh. There it goes. Okay. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. Right in here, immediately. Before oh, we got it wet, that wasn't visible. Right there. So that would be your target area if you were about to, well, first of all, you, oh, sorry. <laughs> So you know how in the velvet obsidian, we talked about the, the greens and the pinks? Yeah. I see a lot of those. When it comes to light wavelengths, blues, greens, those are shorter wavelengths. As you get to the yellows, the orange, red, those are longer wavelengths. And so when it comes to iridescence, blues and greens are often a little bit easier to produce. Well, I think that Kyle is trying to polish this into one large chunk of fire obsidian. We both see tons of color all over the thing, so I I, <laughs> I think you could do it. That is amazing. That, that would be, be awesome. sensational. Bring it back to us. There is a little bit of danger associated with trying to carve and polish one giant piece of fire obsidian, and I'm going to show you why. So these two pieces are pretty cool, right? Yeah, I love those. Yeah. 
Well, it was originally supposed to be one piece, oh. but it cracked during the no. process. Yeah. Oh my so goodness. So that's one of the dangers of working with obsidian in general because it's glass, dude. It breaks. Another difficulty is maintaining the iridescence that the stone oh, can yeah. provide because these layers are actually really random. They're pretty they're, erratic. Yeah, yeah, they're rarely flat. They can kind of curve, undulate. They even, they'll double back on themselves. So when the lapidary is cutting it, he or she really has to follow the layer and make sure that they're really careful when it comes to polishing these. It reminds me kind of like a racetrack, don't you think? Oh, of the, in the layering? Yeah. yeah. It looks like maybe eight really prominent successive bands that make this racetrack. And then in the middle, there are more like broader flashes. Don't you think it's kind of like abstract art? Yeah, I could see a Jackson Pollock influence in this. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Let's talk a, a little bit about the locality. Fire obsidian is only found in Glass Butte, Oregon. It's about 6,000 square acres in the area. A lot of it is a publicly available for like use, but there are some areas that people have claimed. It's a little bit hairy if you're trying to dig up there in Glass Butte, probably check with authorities, because there are places that you can do it, and there are places that you can't, and there are places that you may be told that you can't, but you actually could. It's a little complicated. It sounds like it. <laughs> in Glass Butte, you can find obsidian even just on the ground laying about. But if you want to find fire obsidian, you're gonna have to dig deep and get your hands dirty. They can only be found at small localized dikes in Glass Butte. Got it. So we've got all of these super, super cool fire obsidian. Let's pick our favorites for a closer look. Do you know which one you want? Okay, I know which one I want. One, one two, two, three. three. The reason why I like mine is because you can literally see Roy G. Biv in here. There are thick bands yes. of color. I finally remembered what that reminds me of. You know the uh, technical issues, please stand by screen on TV where it's like big color yes. bar, big color. That's like, that's what that looks it like. Is, yeah, it is that thickness. Yeah. yeah, I picked this guy because I knew you were gonna pick that guy. And I think this one, the layering, you can very clearly see like the rings of a tree. It's not too shabby. Yeah, that one's really cool. So let's take a closer look. Okay, Rob, thank you so much of course, for, yeah. for teaching me about this. Thanks to Kyle for lending us these specimens to enjoy. We love it. I do have one last little gift from Kyle, though. So, okay. quick pause. Or play. Oh he my made goodness. this play button. <laughs> it's got fire obsidian on the inside, and it's agatized dinosaur bone. That is awesome. How cool is that? I love that. Go check out Kyle's channel. It's going to be a link in the description. And if you want to learn more about other varieties of gems, go to gemstones.com. We have so many articles and videos, and there are so many gems to learn about. So head there. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on our future episodes. Thanks for watching.